This is a quick video talking about language production. These are my summaries of the Psy246 course from Macquarie University on Cognitive Psychology. So to begin with, improvisation in speech are where strategies are used to reduce speech production demands. Since as you know, language production is quite cognitively demanding and thus there must be ways to reduce that demand to make the process more efficient. Preformulation is the production of phrases which are used frequently by the individual before and they make up 70% of reused phrases. So there's already um, a set number of ways to produce the words, sentences, paragraphs, phrases, etc. Under specification is using simplified expressions instead of being specific. So for example, you may say and such or something, etc, etc. Okay. Four levels of speech production. These include semantic level, whereby it conveys the intention or meaning of the speech. Syntactic level, which is arranging the sentence or phrase. For example, I went to the store versus I went, I too went store the. So this is grammar, basically. Um, yeah. Morphological level is the construct of words such as cat, but also can include ed, pre, s, un, ing, etc. So it includes adding prefixes, prefixes and suffixes to the word which convey meaning or even the opposite of something like unavailable. Phonological level. These are phonemes and these are the basic units of sound. So units of planning. Pauses usually occur before clauses or phrases and planning depends on speed or fluency demands. Clauses are defined as word groups within a sentence, and they contain subjects and verbs. Pauses occur before new clauses. Phrases are word groups with no subject verb. Pauses are longer before complex than compared to simple phrases. Errors. In error detection, usually individuals with aphasia do not pick up on their errors. Error detection is a speech production system that has an inbuilt detection mechanism. It includes anticipatory, which is planning for sounds that are vocalized too early, so for example, a cuff of coffee. There are also preservatory errors, which are earlier sound is mistakenly repeated, such as chicken nuku soup, the K sound is preserved. Tongue twisters. These are errors that are most common and they are designed to trip up production plans, like she sells seashells by the seashore. Morpheme exchange errors. These are where mixed up sounds occur, for example saying awful instead of beautiful, because both of these words have full at the end. Word exchange errors. This is mixing up words and can occur anywhere in a clause and across different phrases. Sound exchange errors. For example, this can include a top of key as well as spoonerisms, which is mixing up sounds of two words and results in changing of meaning. So for example, you say belly jeans as opposed to jelly beans. Lexical selection error. This is the choosing of the wrong word. So for example, using affluence instead of influence or using effect instead of effect. Semantic substitution. An example of this is using the word tennis bat or dinner coat. Thus, similar words are used. Number arrangement error. This is where singular verbs are mistakenly used with plural subjects or vice versa. Now I'll talk about theories of speech production. Spreading activation theory, according to Dell, is a neural network with parallel processing and nodes which represent lexicon, morphemes, phonemes, and semantics that activate adjacent nodes, and it does not account for planning. Weaver plus plus model. This is the word form that is encoded by activation or verification. And those processes include feed forward activation, which is a spreading stage model where a network predicts the time taken to produce speech and word selection occurs prior to the creation of the sound. It also involves serial processing and lexicalization, which is turning meaning into sounds. Lexicalization only covers single words. 
It focuses more on the timing of word production, going from lexical to morphology to phonology encoding, and it does not account for errors. Aphasia. This is where there is a severe problem in comprehension and the production of language, uh, usually caused by brain damage. Broca's aphasia is slow, non-fluent speech, which produces grammatical errors, but there is intact speech comprehension. Melodic intonation therapy uses singing to stimulate the right hemisphere, and it facilitates speech recovery. It also uses tapping with the left hand for rhythm, and thus this helps to bring back the timing of speech and fixes the left hemisphere. Wernick's aphasia. This is a form of fluent aphasia, which has grammatical speech, but lacks meaning, and thus there is trouble with speech comprehension. It affects the left posterior temporal lobe, or Wernick's area, thus being called Wernick's aphasia. There is a sense of interaction, or of associations taking place, but there is just no meaning. Anomia. This is defined as the impaired ability to name objects. So basically, unable to retrieve words. They have no lexical problems, but they're always on the cusp of what is called lemma selection, which is that tip of the tongue experience. There is little evidence for lemma level, and patient MT, for example, had a deficit in mapping semantic to phonology. A grammatism. This is defined as speech production that lacks grammatical structure. Functional words or word endings become omitted. This supports the notion that production involves syntactic level, which is connected with Broca's aphasia. There is also jargon aphasia, which is a form of Wernick's aphasia. It is grammatically correct, but individuals who have this form of aphasia cannot find words to say, so they use neologisms or made-up words, and thus this highlights that they have a comprehension problem in regards to their phonological encoding. Speech as communication. Grice's 1967 components of communication include cooperative principles such as whether the speech conveys a certain quantity of information, a quality of information, as in how truthful and accurate that information is, the manner of information, so how it makes contributions and how easy it is to understand, the audience design, so you have to account for the need of the listener. There is also syntactic priming, which is the use of the same syntax, as well as gestures, which add emphasis, prosodic cueing, which is intonation and adds meaning, and there's also discourse markers, which are phrases like um. And finally, there are musical disorders, which includes congenital amusia, which is the inability to recognize or produce musical tones, acquired amusia, beat deafness, which is where individuals can't pick up the beat, and there's musical dystonia, which is a motor issue. And as a result, remaps the brain. And yeah. So, in summary, we looked at improvisation in speech, reformulation, under specification, the four levels of speech production, including semantic level, syntactic level, morphological level, phonological level. We looked at units of things such as causes and phrases. We looked at errors, uh, error detection. We looked at types of errors such as anticipatory errors, preservatory errors, tongue twisters, morphing exchange errors, word exchange errors, sound exchange errors, lexical selection errors, number arrangement errors, semantic substitution. We looked at theories of speech production such as spreading activation theory, according to Dell. We looked at Weaver plus plus model. We looked at feed forward activation lexicalization. We looked at aphasia. We looked at Broca's aphasia, melodic intonation therapy, Wernick's aphasia. We looked at anomia, a grammatism, jargon aphasia, as well as musical disorders such as congenital amusia, acquired amusia, beat deafness, musical dystonia, and also we looked at speech as communication, such as the cooperative principles of quantity, quality, manner, audience, design, syntactic priming gestures, prosodic killing, and discourse markers. Ultimately, thanks for watching, and join me next time where I'll talk about cognitive neuropsychology. Bye-bye.